name is Eric Michael Shuffle. Everyone calls me EMS. Uh, I've done Surprise Attack Records. I started it as a fanzine. I think it was about 92. Uh, initially it was just featuring all Pennsylvania bands. I think the first issue had like Conviction, Forethought, um, Introspect, a couple other bands. Uh, I always kind of really focused on that stuff and then eventually I um, started doing PA releases. Uh, my first release was Outcome. They were from Allentown. Some of those guys went into uh, Turmoil and Lit Golden Sky later. Uh, so that was pretty cool. It was definitely a, a learning process with that. Then I did Digression. Uh, I, in 1995, after I graduated high school, I moved up to uh, Erie, PA and got heavily involved in that scene. So I started doing, um, did a Disciple record, their first 7-inch, and uh, Shockwave, which was uh, pretty, uh, pretty worldwide known. For those guys. So. I actually moved to join uh, Brothers Keeper. They had just started up. Uh, they were something to prove before that and I was a, a fan of that stuff and I uh, wrote it for them a bit. I come up on the weekends uh, while I was still in high school so as soon as I graduated uh, they were like you want to come on try out for bass and I didn't really have anything going so uh, I definitely uh, just loaded up my little 1980 Datsun 200 SX and uh, hit the road, so uh, and I've, I've been up there ever since. Uh, initially it was Brothers Keeper, uh, Disciple was just starting out, uh, Abnegation, they were uh, real big in like the vegan straight edge culture. Uh, I think that was pretty much at the time. Uh, Digression was another one that was coming up, there were some younger dudes and uh, definitely uh, made a mark at the time. I think those were the four kind of four horsemen of Erie at the time. So, uh, What clubs did you have up there? Uh, when I first moved up there, the Continental Ballroom uh, was was in full effect, and that was uh, that was a great place. It was just a uh, kind of kind of the middle of the neighborhood. It was an old uh, old ballroom that kind of had a setup for like a jazz band with a couple levels for the stage and everything. It had like a tin foil ceiling with mirrors all behind it, and it would just sweat and drip down on everybody as the bands would play throughout the night. And we had a lot of great stuff. Uh, Dead Guy came through, Torn Apart, Integrity, One Life Crew, actually in the One Life Crew CD, the, the photos from Erie, the original one on Victory, and that was in the Continental Ballroom, and there's a lot of legendary stuff that came through there, so that was a, that was a great club. I think 108, Overcast, uh, and all the locals would play there a ton, Snapcase, most of the shows were at that time were about three to 500 kids would come out. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of Buffalo, Cleveland, Pittsburgh kids would come up. It was, it was awesome. What other clubs were up there besides that? Uh, after Continental, everything kind of moved to a place called IQ Records, which was right on State Street, kind of downtown Erie. And, and once again, the shows were huge. Uh, Brothers Keeper and Disciple and Shockwave were pulling in a lot of kids. And the, the vibe was awesome. Uh, real energetic. People were going nuts. Lots of sing along, stage dives. Um, that, that lasted for a bit, but the owner was uh, pretty sketchy, unfortunately. Uh, there's there holes in the floor. You could kind of see what was going on in the basement and stuff. And, uh, but we definitely had some huge bands come through there. Hate Breed, Another Victim, uh, No Innocent Victim, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. Like Indecision came through. Like uh, Erie was always kind of a secondary stop, you know, as opposed to like Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland. But uh, bands already really liked the crowds because kids were really hungry there for uh, for stuff to come through there wasn't a ton going on in Erie otherwise so yeah, there was uh, after IQ closed down uh, about 1998 we started doing stuff at Ford Hall uh, that had just opened up and uh, Brothers Keeper had one of our record release shows there with uh, Disembodied and I think that actually we peaked out at 700 kids at that and, and that was just massive and then Shockwave was really taken off at that time and they were killing it bringing in you know just as many kids and that was always wild kids would dress up as robots and Santa Claus and all kinds of crazy barbarian making their own weapons and just battling when they played and uh, those those were always fun shows yeah. <laughs> Shockwave is pretty infamous you know uh, uh, it, it was they, they started doing uh, Shocktober yeah. every year and then uh, 2009 we did December con that's the last time they played and that that was with uh, Wisdom and Chains, Steel Nation, Shy Halud, and uh, Borrowed Time. And that was well over 700 kids. We, we packed them in, man. It was awesome. But it was always kind of a spectacle. It kind of became an annual thing. 
which was great, you know, because well, I put out their first record, so that was good for me because it uh, definitely helped sell some records. But uh, a lot of those guys had other serious bands, so it was kind of a shame to see their serious bands not really take off as much as kind of a, a band about toys. But kid, <laughs> kids really seem to latch on to that and uh, embrace the, the mosh and uh, also just the, the youthfulness of it. So. Tell us about your time at Brothers Caper. Oh, man, I, I did that from 95 to 2003 toured the U.S. several times, went to Europe twice, a uh, ton of records. We were kind of one of those bands that were loved and hated. Uh, we had our pockets, we did great. We had cities where we'd just get heckled and people would talk shit to us, but you know, it was it was no big deal. We just did our own thing and, and did it the best we could. So I'd rather be in a band that was kind of uh, remembered than uh, just kind of faded into obscurity. So. I'd say some of the, the big heavy hitters in Erie in, in the early days, and this was before I even lived up there, would have been Mike Ski, uh, our friend Iggy, uh, Ben Frazier, Rob Whipple. Uh, there's a lot of Erie skinheads too back then that would uh, come to the shows and get rowdy and get kind of nuts, but they were all working really hard, you know. There was always some conflicts, but everyone was, was pretty respectful of each other. There'd be some fights here and there, but uh, Everyone really in, enjoyed uh, the Erie hardcore scene, the punk rock, and there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, Pittsburgh was great. We used to go down to shows a lot. Uh, Club Laga was always a rad spot. Um, Millvale Industrial Theater, I saw some stuff there. But uh, Laga had some huge shows, and, and we'd come down there and play too. And we played with uh, Agnostic Front 97 right when they got back together. So growing up being a huge fan of that stuff, that was definitely definitely like really important to, to get to do as, as part of my life you know I mean that was a band I heard you know a decade before that that just changed everything for me so um go out some uh, Pittsburgh bands for me yeah uh, gut wrench has been around forever there was a time bomb way back in the day right yeah yeah I think Pennsylvania's still doing great uh, you know Western PA and Eastern PA are kind of uh, two separate worlds at times but uh, a lot of bands still travel and, and try and check out each space, but you know, like we're about seven hours from Philly, so it's definitely worlds apart. But uh, you know, all the East East Coast fests are great. I grew up out that way, so you know, I, I definitely lean towards that more. But um, you know, Pittsburgh's got Sincerity Fest going now. That's that's definitely packing kids in, and I, I know that's free and everything, so that's a cool thing. Um, a huge influence for me was Something to Prove, which was uh, my friend Roger and Mike's band, uh, previous to Brothers Keeper. So they were on a comp, and once I heard those guys, you know, I just really liked it. it had a lot of attitude and stuff like that, and I think they really kind of put Erie on the map for better or for worse, because uh, you know, a lot of people kind of talk trash. They had a little bit of a hip hop kind of little street attitude, but uh, that's definitely the stuff I was more drawn to.